this one is going to be on a user by the name of Rowan Akamiya185. This guy seems to be one of my common viewers, and he seems like a pretty good person. Now, he recently did a commentary on my top 10 least favorite video game bosses remake. I enjoy seeing people do commentaries on me, as long as they're done right. But this one, well, no offense, Rowan, but, well, we're going to look into this commentary and see exactly what I have to say. So with that said, let's get started. Hey everyone, we're on Amy 5 here, and here I am with another commentary. No offense, but do you think you could try to put some more emotion into this video? Because your voice is pretty much monotone throughout the whole thing. I don't know if you have control over it or not, but whenever I asked you, you didn't respond so it's hard to know. And if you don't have control over it, then the least you could do is turn up your microphone or turn up your audio takes. It's not that hard. When I first watched this video, I had to have my volume on max in order to hear what you were saying. And when making this commentary, I had to keep turning up your audio clips whenever you refuted one of my points. One minute, 37 seconds later. You know that we're going to be in for a rough time when young Xehanort is only number 10 on the list. Wow, even you admit that your least favorite boss in the Kingdom Hearts series is only number 10 on the list. Love your first impression, dude. Why does it matter that my least favorite Kingdom Hearts boss is only number 10? I just so happen to find 9 worse bosses, so why is that a bad thing? Besides, Opinions change over time. For example, I don't hate the final boss of Yoshi's New Island as much as I used to because I realized that just because the boss is an insulting version of a past boss doesn't mean you have to think less of the original. A few moments later... Xehanort will constantly teleport around, throwing fast attacks at you that will make Meta Knight proud. Is that really the best comparison you could have made with young Xehanort's fast combo attacks? Yes, I know. Meta Knight was OP back in the Brawl days, but couldn't you find something else who had even faster combo attack than Man I mean, Man I isn't really fast outside of Brawl. Can't you take a joke? Is it not so obvious that I was making a joke to you? Ten seconds later. And if you don't break it in time, young Xehanort will use it to gain back a third of his HP and make you have to fight him again. You could have also bought the fact that when young Xehanort regains a third of his health, you have to sit through a painfully long unskippable cutscene before you can fight him again. I know that A, you don't want to repeat yourself since you already said that three times in the past, and B, it's not part of the gameplay, but still, we're here to talk about it. Yes, I still hate that stupid long cutscene, but I don't have to say that every time I talk about him. 12 seconds later. Easily the most infamous boss in all of Mega Man, the Yellow Devil is rightfully hated by many. Question, when you meant all of Mega Man, do you just mean the first Mega Man game on the NES? or the entire Mega Man series, because, well, while I wouldn't say that the Yellow Devil is a good boss, I bet a lot of people would think of another boss worse than him. The Booming Trap of Mega Man 2 comes to mind. I meant the entire Mega Man series. And besides, this one is talked about more often. Even so, the example you brought up is still from the main series. A little later. And to think, Capcom had the audacity to bring this atrocious fight back in some of their games. Why? That's I don't know, but there are just some viewing developers who just love bringing back bosses from previous games, whether it's good or bad. And eh, I guess Capcom here is no exception. Also, you were showing footage of the fight against Yellow Devil Mark II in the second game. That was a game that introduced a slide move. When I showed footage from the third game, not the second, I was just bringing up an example. Besides, that's still no excuse. A few minutes later... That's like if the Zelda series had to keep bringing back the Water Temple. I mean the actual Water Temple. This joke failed for three reasons. One, the Yellow Devil appeared in the first Mega Man game. However, the Water Temple didn't appear in the first Zelda game. I know it's still pretty infamous, but still. I know that you're trying to sound smart, but it's still a classic Zelda dungeon that everyone hates. So that's why I use it as an example. Two, I don't understand why you show footage of the lake bed tempo since it's also not a really good water level in Zelda. Okay, fine. The lake bed temple is a level you don't like. Good to know. That doesn't mean everyone will agree with you. Moments later. Now, I won't stop people from calling this the hardest level in the original Mega Man, but I just hope that people will stop questioning on how Wily is able to check on all of his own death spikes in that level without getting gore on them ever since Peanut 3423 joked about them in the original version of his top 10 worst video game cliches list. And what exactly does that have to do with the video? Hello? Are you gonna say what it has to do with it?
I really don't understand what people like about K. Rule Duel and Donkey Kong Country 2. Now, please don't take that the wrong way. I respect other people's opinions, but I personally don't see what makes it so great. Meta, we all have different tastes when it comes to different things in video games. I clearly said that people don't have to agree with me. I was just saying I don't know why people like it. 1 minute 37 seconds later. He also has that trick where he makes you think you won, but then gets back up. This won't be too bad, except after a while it gets tiresome and only delays this awful fight. Another question, how many times does K. Roo use that trick? Because like I said, I've seen footage of the final boss get him in Donkey Kong Country 2, and from what I can gather, he only used that trick once. After knocking it out the second time, he may get back up, but Donkey Kong frees himself and finishes K. Roo off. Unless you're referring to the first time K. Roo pulled that trick, back when you fought him as the final boss in the first Donkey Kong Country game, but we need that trick in DKC2, old and tiresome. Okay, first off, what's with all that background noise? I understand if someone's doing something in the house, but it's probably more professional to wait until the background is quieter. Second off, he plays that trick on you twice in this fight, not counting the time where Donkey Kong punches him. The first game he only does it once, but here he does it twice. And lastly, even if it was only once, the amount of times people will die against him will make them have to keep watching the same scene over and over again until it gets more redundant. I remember saying this was a disappointing final boss back in 2011. Man, was it really that long since I last rented on this boss? Yup, 7 years ago meta, 7 years ago. Well, I give you some credit, at least you do look back on your own work. I know it was 7 years ago. There's a term called being dramatic, look it up. I've heard people say this isn't the actual final boss, but the fight with him in Crocodile Core is. I've heard the Crocodile Core fight with him in the post game is much worse. But I wouldn't know since I don't know if I'd be able to get that far. And by that, do you mean you don't know if you can reach him in Crocodile Core? Well, I wouldn't blame you since A, DKT2 is a difficult game, and B, getting to him in Crocodile Core requires finding and completing every bonus level in the game to get all the Kremlin coins and being all the Lost Worlds level. So I want to ask, when do you start playing this game? 2011 or earlier than that? Actually, I first played this game about 8 years ago in the summer. And I would understand you saying that even after 8 years I still haven't fought him, but maybe that's because I was, I don't know, busy playing other games? Well, I have nothing more to say about this part, so let's move on to his part 2. Four to six weeks later. As I've stated before, I hate the original Rayman. Wow, Meta, I'm surprised that it took you this long for you to say, I hate the original Rayman. Ever since you started ranking on it on your top 10 most disappointing games countdown, it took you about 9 months for you to state the fact that you do hate the game. And why does it matter that I didn't say the exact words I hate this game in those instances? I'm pretty sure that when I say it's one of the most frustrating gaming experiences of my life, that would probably be evidence enough. Even so, in last year's Q&A video, which was just two months after my games that aren't what they could have been, I stated that the original Rayman was one of my least favorite games I played last year. Also, that subtitle saying the name of the list doesn't make sense? It does make sense. It's a list of games that could have been so much better than they ended up being. Now, I'm not going to bash you for not liking the original Rayman. As I respect your opinion, you do bring up valid points about why you don't like the game, and most of the problem you have with the game, I do agree with. You're just lucky that you got the PlayStation version, while I was stuck with the Game Boy Advance version, which isn't bad, but limitations of the GBA makes it just as good as you expect. Thanks for the information! Now I just have one question. How does bringing up the GBA port refute my argument in any way? All you're doing is saying, so you hate this game, well there's a version of it that's worse. More moments later. First thing, look at her. Or better yet, don't look at her. Did Ubisoft really think that her ugly face would be a pleasing image for kids? Her face doesn't look that unbearable. In fact, I argue that her body is a less pleasing image for kids. Besides, she had that face in your first encounter with her too. Unless you're trying to say that her face looks worse in the rematch. Aside from the fact that her face isn't that bad in your eyes, I never said she wasn't ugly in the first fight. I was just bringing it up as a factor as to why this boss fight is so bad. It's not even ugly in a classic way. 
And by that, do you mean that it's not even ugly in a Gruntilda way? Yes, I mean like Gruntilda, and also like certain other villains who look ugly in a classic way. Like the evil witch from Snow White. No, do so. I'm telling that to someone who didn't even grow up with Banjo-Kazooie. Just because I didn't grow up with Banjo-Kazooie doesn't mean I can't regard it as a classic. Wanna know what classic means? A work of art of recognized and established value. It doesn't say I have to grow up with it. She has an attack where she leaves behind all these exploding pots. You need to crawl your way out of them, but how can you possibly hope to crawl out of that in time? The diagonal ones are a nightmare too, because they make things all the more confusing, especially when she uses diagonal ones and horizontal and or vertical ones at the same time. First off, be lucky that she doesn't use horizontal, vertical, and diagonal pots at the same time. Don't know if that would make you feel better, but just wanted to point out. No, it doesn't make me feel better. All you're doing is bringing up a reason as to what could possibly make her even worse. I thought you were getting better in this part, but it looks like I might be pushing my luck with this. Moments later. Guys, quit arguing about shit I don't even care about. I'm just your faggot asses in the kitchen. You used a 6 second long skip card to skip 5 seconds of my video. I don't exactly see the point of that. A few minutes later. Battle of the Colossus is most well known for its fantastic boss fights. Now, I'm just going to point this out, you should probably learn to cut the video better. You basically cut out the S in the word Shadow when you imported my footage. With bosses such as Phalanx, Avion, and Malice. I thought that you are going to bring up that you weren't the biggest fan of the game. Even if you did bring up Shadow of the Colossus in your last countdown. But nope, you just started the entry off by saying that it is well known for its fantastic boss battles. Don't know about you. But it's kinda lame to start the entry if you ask me. I don't have to talk about the fact that I dislike the game every single time I talk about it. Do you want me to be a very repetitive person? 12 seconds later. Next to Bassaran, this is arguably the most hated boss fight in the entire game. And it deserves every single ounce of hate that it gets. Is the only reason you even bought up Bassaran being just as hated as the Locia simply because Pina 4423 called Bassaran the worst boss in Shadow of the Colossus, even though it's only number 10 on his personal top 10 worst boss fight he faced in video games. Look up how people hate Bassaran. Plenty of people hate it. A few moments later. Oh boy, here's an unpopular opinion. You're seeing this right. I hate the fight against Giant Bowser in Mario and Luigi Dream Team. But why do I hate a boss that so many people praise? Like I said in the K. Roo entry, we all had different tastes when it comes to different things in video games. Not to mention, least favorite is in the title of the video, meaning that every boss on this list is opinion based and not based on the views of the general consensus. I never said that people can't like this boss. I was explaining my reasons as to why I disagree with the majority. More moments later. Despite that, however, he's still very frustrating to fight against. I think the term very frustrating mainly fits for the second phase, but we'll get into that later. I can barely see those subtitles because they blend in with the background. At least change the color or put them somewhere where they're visible. It depends on what video editing software you use. Moments later. And trust me, when I say that they're even worse in this fight, because now there are higher chances of you losing control of Luigi, setting him spinning into the lava. What do you mean by worse in this fight? Do you mean the job school controls are worse in the giant Bowser battle? Because the only other giant battle I've seen that incorporates job school controls that doesn't involve fine blows is the Z Keeper. I'm pretty sure I explained what I meant by worse in this fight. I said it's easier to lose control than it normally is. There's another face of this fight which isn't as bad because the problems aren't as prominent, but that doesn't change how terrible this fight is. Would you care to elaborate on how the problem in the previous phases doesn't affect this phase? It was mainly just me, but aside from the jostle controls and maybe the difficulty in the first phase, I don't see how the problem in the last two phases translates to the first phase. But then again, the final phase is the same uh, finisher that is used in the other John Luigi battles if it does incorporate the aforementioned Jarosco control. Yes, the finisher of the last phase is the same, except now you have to dodge Bowser's fire during it. Reason I didn't bring that up was because it doesn't bother me as much as the rest of the fight. A few inches later. I can understand what people love about this fight, but this is one instance of unpopular opinions. 
We get it, Meta. You hate this bot while other people like it. Stop hammering the fact that's an unpopular opinion. Um, I believe I only brought up the fact that I have an unpopular opinion only twice in this entry. Once at the beginning and once at the end. And that's all I have for this part two. So let's finish this on its final part. Wait, you mean part three still isn't the final part? Oh, come on! I feel like you're outright trying to point out anything in my countdown that could even remotely be considered a problem. I don't know if that's the case or not, but if you had understood this, this commentary probably wouldn't have been nearly as long as it currently is. Commentaries aren't about trying to make as many counterpoints as you can. They're about actually pointing out what you think are actual problems. So let's see how long until his next part comes out. One eternity later. Everyone hates Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon because of how despite being the so-called superior versions, they mess up some things that made the first Sun and Moon so awesome. Hmm. I'm looking at the ratings of the games in this screenshot right here, and I can safely say that what you just said was nothing more than a hyperbole. Yes, the game got good critic scores. But critic scores and fan reception are not the same thing. Movies like Sponge Out of Water and Indiana Jones Kingdom of the Crystal Skull are both movies that have gotten a few high scores, but people around the world hate them. A little later. While I like these two more than I should, I don't have a problem with you disagreeing on the haters on the games, but if you're going to say that the games aren't really well received, then maybe you have second thought about putting the games on number one on your top playing games you first playing 2017 list. I cannot believe you said that. I said I like these games more than I should. That doesn't mean I have no right to have them at the top of my 2017 games list. Also, the next part contains spoilers from Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, so I'm gonna put up a subtitle saying where to skip to. A little later. Albeit not as much as the previously mentioned predecessors, I do agree on some complaints. Is making Lucimine confusing one of them? Okay, and what exactly does Lucimine being a confusing villain refute my point in any way? All you're saying is that, oh, is that one of those examples? That doesn't at all counter any of my points. 1 minute 37 seconds later. You want to know what its base stat toll is? 754. Guess we should just forget about Arceus since the god of all Pokemon is outclassed by multiple other Pokemon now. This one not even needing any certain moves or hold items to transform. Hey, at least it's not both Mega Mewtwo's who both have a base stat toll of 780. Yes, Mega Mewtwo X and Y have better stats. So? That doesn't prove me wrong about how they keep making multiple Pokemon stronger than Arceus. Two very boring minutes later. Here's a boss that I'm pretty sure that almost every Metroid player will agree with me on. And by that, do you mean every player of the Metroid series or this game? Because, well, well I do agree that a fight against Mother Brain in both the original Metroid and its remake look like crap, but like a Yellow Devil case, I'm sure there will be some people who find fight worse than Mother Brain in those games. MB is a good example. I only said they'd agree with me that the boss is bad. I never said they'd agree with me that it's the worst. Moments later. Dealing with the Metroids on the way to her is already a major pain in the neck. Okay, I haven't been in the original Metroid either, and honestly, I think most people, even some who grew up with the game, would agree with me. No, I no I have I been in Zero Mission, but how about you just freeze a Metroid and then shoot it? Even if there are multiple pe Metroids pestering you. Yeah, but the thing is, you won't always know when a Metroid is going to show up. So they can take you completely by surprise if you're not careful. 12 seconds later. Did you know that the Game Boy Advance version couldn't possibly make this fight even worse than it already is? The Game Boy Advance is a handheld, so it's going to have its limitation and screen crunch that will make certain things in the game they were making worse. The Game Boy Advance version has capabilities that are far superior to the NES because it was made like a decade and a half after the NES. Maybe if you're making a commentary, you should probably know about how video game consoles work. I'm sorry if I'm being harsh, but that's something that should be a given. Ten seconds later. I know that you ran about that in the past, kind of like that unspeakable cutscene during Young Xenor's fight, but like with Young Xenor's case, it wouldn't hurt to elaborate here, especially for newcomers. Also, I didn't realize this until now, but this list also marked the first time you had a full detail rant with Mother Brain. What reason do you have to stretch out the word time? Haven't you ever heard of retakes or audio splitting? 
The latter which takes like not even 10 seconds to do. 12 seconds later. The amount of garbage being rained on me is already too much. You really need to make an already bad situation even worse. Please remember what I said about the GV having a limitation because I refuse to repeat myself. You don't need to stop the video to talk about how you won't repeat yourself. That's something that people stopped doing years ago. I mean, I only brought up your quiet audio once, not counting this time, so that was enough. 1 minute 37 seconds later. And I'm gonna end the part right here. I gotta be honest here. Oh man, I did say some stupid things the first four fifths of the video. These four fifths wasn't all that bad. They're not really that good, but they aren't terrible either. I bring this up because the last two entries on this list is really where this countdown goes downhill. Ugh, get ready, people. Okay, so the countdown goes downhill in the top two entries. Question Are you going to explain how it goes downhill? Well, okay then. And the worst part is that we still have one more part to suffer through in this commentary. Well, at least it's gonna be over soon. Tomorrow for sure. While in Kirby Canvas Curse, this boss is a moldy piece of cake that's been left sitting on the table for a whole year. Yeah, that's the point about the piece of cake that I want to bring up. Piece of cake means easy. In other words, since you face Pain Roller when you start playing Nightmare in Dreamland, you assume that him and Cameron Curse will be easy too. What I'm getting at is, think of a sentence that means hard, and moldy piece of cake is not a good one. In fact, I don't think it's an actual sentence. And if it is, I doubt you'll mean opposite of easy. So if you want to think of a better reference, try and think of two sentences. That mean the opposite by the same subject. If you can't find one, don't put it in and maybe just say something plain. That work too. I'm sorry, but I can barely make out what you're saying there. You're saying something about my piece of cake expression not being good because piece of cake means easy and the opposite of hard or something? I don't know, so please stop ruining my jokes unless you have a way of making your point easy to understand. Maybe not so much on the first and second levels, but definitely on the third. This isn't your everyday ordinary boss fight. First off, of course it's not an ordinary everyday boss fight. It's a mini game. You're correct, but that line wasn't necessary. Okay, I actually do have an explanation for mentioning that this isn't an ordinary boss. I wanted people to be on the same page as me, because it doesn't look at all like a boss fight, so people would think it doesn't count. And I wanted to make sure they understand that it does. Ten seconds later. And finally, why are you putting only a harder version of a boss on this list, let alone a main game boss? If we're going to put the entire pain roller battle from Canvas Girls on the list, then fine, I won't mind. But putting a higher difficulty of the boss, if you find it hard, that's not an excuse, even if you want to rant about it so badly. I'm sorry, but in my opinion, you should either place the entire pain roller battle on number on the number two spot or leave it off the list completely. I can't decide if I should agree with that point or not, because it is technically the same fight, but it has much more puzzles in it. Soon after. The worst part of it, however, is that I still can't beat him. He's so far made it into my hardest bosses list, and when that's the boss that doesn't even feel the slightest bit inspiring, that makes me despise it with a burning passion. Okay, what do you mean by uninspiring? I know what you're trying to say. The one boss you cannot beat is probably the most uninspiring boss you've ever faced. But what are you trying to say when you call it Pain Roller Low Free? An uninspiring boss, because the only thing you call uninspiring about the battle was the music. By that, I meant that the boss was kind of random to be one of my hardest bosses. It's not like the mysterious figure in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, or in Tasma in Mario & Luigi Dream Team, it's just a random boss. I don't know how to explain it. And now I'll give you a major spoiler warning from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, since there are spoilers from that game coming up. Eventually. So you set foot into Elysium in the final chapter, you make your way towards this temple. What happened to my original audio? Did you turn it down? Did your video editor mess up? Uh. The fight with Neo was pretty bad. Elaborate! That was kind of an interesting usage of that clip. But I think that my points about not being able to level grind and having no backup during the Morag fight would help people understand that this problem exists in the fight with Nia too. A few moments later. Meanwhile, I have very little strategy to get around this since I had the best plays in the game, Pyra and Mithra, taken away from me, leaving me with the Pudisburg's cousin and no way of healing. 
The worst part of it all is that since you have your party members taken. Okay, first off, I wasn't gonna the joke you made about Rock has if I heard where it came from, but I did not. So, can you elaborate about that joke? Yeah, you don't know where my joke about Rock came from. Not everyone has to understand the context to my joke. But if most people will understand it, then it's probably okay. And in response to where the joke is from, well, it's kind of a joke that fans make about Team Fortress, though it's not in Team Fortress itself. It's mainly derived from a small line in it. The worst part of it all is that since you have your party members taken away from you, and how helpless you are against the enemies that are around your level and give decent experience, it will take hours to grind a single level. G Shang 750 said this in his own country on Game 2, and I gotta say it here. Okay, I surely have no idea what you're trying to say right there. You don't need to quote someone if it's a point as simple as, I have no idea what you're trying to say. And I can explain my point. At this point of the game, your best way to level grind is against some of the later enemies in the game, but the only reason it doesn't take you too long to beat them is because you have your party members to help you. So without them, those enemies take forever to kill. So that means it'll take even longer to gain a level. Later. Pin Roller may have been cheaper, but at least the worst fight with him was optional. Exactly. For referring my point, why level 3 Pain Roller shouldn't be on this list at all. The fact that Pain Roller level 3 was optional is not an excuse to make something terrible. If you've played the infamous Lily Pad segment in Super Mario Sunshine, you'd probably understand where I'm coming from. Later. I'll admit, you did have some pretty decent choices, but some of the bosses you ranted about on this list is bosses that you've already ranted about in the past. I hate to be a grammar Nazi, but bosses you ranted on is bosses you've ranted on in the past? I'm sorry, but yeah. And with that, I think I've talked about enough in this video. So, final thoughts? Well, throughout the commentary, it felt like you were just trying to make as many counterpoints as you could. And you also could have done a much better job with your audio balancing. And another thing, I understand if you have a stuttering problem, but if that's the case, then you should probably just edit out your stuttering. That's what I do. Well, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Rowan, I hope you will take my advice. And to the viewers watching, please do not go to his channel and attack him. So here's what's going on in this video. Nine years ago, a stupid fangirl named Bieber Level 1234 got butthurt about people's opinions towards Justin Bieber. Then a former commentator named Supersonic407 did a commentary on her. Then Joshua 428 did a commentary on him. Then another former commentator named Roshutsu did a commentary on Joshua. Then DGSJ103 commentated on her, and I commentated on him, but I barely even got past the 30% mark. Then many years later, Rona Kamiya185 decided to commentate my commentary. I would do a full length commentary on Rowan's video, but I'm not sure how people would react to a 7th degree commentary, so I'll just point out 3 points in this video. I already have another commentary in the works on him anyways, so let's get into this. Now I am going to skip Man's next one because all it consists of is him saying how he would change Brian's avatar because he's too overprotective about copyright. I can say it right now, if Dan Grino account didn't get terminated, he would be just paranoid about it. Well, at least he's no longer like this towards copyright anymore. Either way, I'm going to use Ryan's original avatar in this commentary. Actually, truth be told, I was paranoid about copyright about a year before Roshutsu's original account was terminated. I believe that because, well, ever heard of a user named Jeepers Media? Back in 2010, he talked about how videos have been taken down for using a lot of Spongebob clips, and my parents told me that other movies and TV shows were the same deal. That's the real reason that I was oversensitive about it. In this video, we're about to meet one of those many fangirls, and she just happens to be a huge fan of Justin Bieber. Holy crap, it's fan-ass Justin Bieber, kill him. <laughs> oh yeah, get used to it, that clip, cause I'm gonna play every time one of the upper people say that name. So I still want you guys to eat chili if you're playing the game. And Justin Bieber. Holy crap, it's fat ass Justin Bieber, kill him. <laughs> I know I'm playing that clip again, but that's what I'm going to do every time someone says that name. If you don't like it, then just deal with it. Well, I'm sorry, but it still gets very stale. It's just like a lot of DJs say jokes that I skip for being repetitive. Even if the joke was funny the first time, Using the same joke over and over and over again every time you get the chance to do it, it gets annoying. If it was a running gag in the video you got it from, then it would still have gotten annoying to some people, but at least I'd give you some leeway because that's how it was used in the video you got it from, but no. I checked out the original video and it was only used once in that video. And addressing the fact that it's wrong doesn't make it any better. It's like what Mr. Renter would say about stuff like this. It's an example of what I'm doing is wrong, I know it's wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You can't
can't just do something wrong, then say, don't you dare call me out on it, without even giving a good reason why you're still doing it. I mean, come on, think about it for a second. If Justin Bieber doesn't care if people hate him, then why are you going through all the trouble in making this video just to defend him? It makes no sense. Because she, because she loves him with all her heart. Yeah, you guys heard me the first time. Not gonna repeat myself here. Well, I'm sorry Danny, but I'm afraid I have to agree with Joshua here. Even though Justin Bieber doesn't care if people hate him, Bieber Law 1234 is still obsessed with him, so she can tell his haters off. I'm not defending Bieber Law 1234, but for this point, I'm sorry, I have to side with Joshua here. That is not an excuse. Being obsessed with Justin Bieber does not excuse this fangirl's actions in this video. She clearly said Justin Bieber doesn't care if people hate him, so he doesn't need some spoiled brat to white knight him and insult anyone who doesn't like him. And even if you're not trying to defend the fangirl, you still technically are by saying, as I quote, she can tell his haters off. She still destroyed the point in making her video. So, there you go. Now, do you guys remember Rowan Akami in 185? Yeah, I commentated on him a year ago, but he requested me to commentate on another of his commentaries. So, Game Dude did a Sonic 06 review a long time ago, Chief Shadow 1750 did a commentary on Game Dude's review, and then, more recently, Rowan Akami in 185 decided to commentate on Chief Shadow's commentary, just like Roshutsu and Super Sonic 407 did a long time ago. Now, one can argue why we're covering a video that's over seven months old by this point, where I've argued relevancy and opinions changing over time, as reasons why I feel that's a bad idea. Well, it's hard to say that when the video in question is a commentary on a video that's over nine years old! A fact Rowan's fully aware of and claims to only be doing this for funsies. So if he doesn't care about video relevancy, why should we? Now, I'd say whether or not it's okay to commentate on an old video is debatable, since some say it's okay, but some say it isn't. But Rowan's commentary, yeah, it could use some work. Oh, and ratings are disabled. That's a good sign. Also, because Meta doesn't want this to be too much of a copy of his recent commentary he did on himself, we're not going to refute Chief Shadow or Game Dude all that much. One more thing before we start the commentary. Chief Shadow didn't want to be reminded of the commentary he did. And for all we know, he probably still doesn't want to, so I don't want any of you informing him of the commentary, because we don't want to risk making him feel worse. So, let's get started. Nothing makes an exciting intro like stoic determination, Sonic blowing through robots, and Indiana Jones looking over a museum. I'm hyped! Okay, in all seriousness, there are some major problems with your intro. First of all, the footage is really inconsistent. Some of your footage has black bars, other bits of footage are cropped just right. Couldn't you at least find footage that was cropped correctly? If you can't, then just find different clips that are more consistent with the rest of your chosen clips aspect ratios. You are in Transformers 5. Second of all, your intro was 49 seconds long. I'm not joking. Intros for these kinds of projects should usually be no more than 30 seconds. Hey everyone, Roman and Kim only get five here, and here I have another commentary. Oh damn it, why is your voice so quiet compared to the intro music? Inconsistent audio levels aren't welcomed in 2019. If I may make a suggestion, turn your narration volume up until it's at least comparable to the audio of the video you're commentating on. And if that still isn't enough, then just record your audio Turn it up, save it as an mp3 file, import said mp3 file, and if it's still not enough, turn it up again until it's as loud as the original audio. That's what I had to do when I did my last commentary on you, Rowan, and that's what I'm doing in this commentary, so the viewers don't have to constantly adjust the volume. A few moments later... The video I'm going to commentate on is by Heathshot1750, and his first and only commentary on Game Dude and his review of Sonic 06. Funny thing about that, Chief Shadow actually did end up doing just one more commentary when he co with Ariana the Echidna, currently known as Chanana Arts, on Joshua for 28th rant about how Chief Shadow was a stupid, lazy, good-for-nothing recolor. I give evidence, but Ariana deleted it because she wasn't proud of her old commentaries. And that video by Chief Shadow, or shall I refer to him as Ryan, was already tackled by two commentators who are superior at making commentaries than me back when they still made commentaries. 
Now, before anyone calls me out and or laugh at me for tackling a video that's about 8 or 9 years old that's already been commentated a long time ago. Oh my god, this is a massive headache and we haven't even gotten started. The video you're about to cover is as old as Sonic Colors, is barely around, and was covered by people you admit are far better than you at this in every way. You're clearly going through hoops to achieve this, but everything about this scenario makes it all seem doomed for failure. Especially considering the fact that Ryan took Danny and the other Ryan's criticism after their commentary, I'm basically like Master TV 10 when it comes to commentaries. In other words, I'm a real at heart. Plus, not all of my points will be carbon cutouts of Danny and Ryan's point when they commentate on, well, the other Ryan, and I'll also be commentating on GameDube, something that they didn't do. Also, just a heads up, Ryan took his video down after Danny and the other Ryan are working on commenting on the first three parts of the commentary. I appreciate how you're trying to make it easy for people to understand which Ryan is which, but when you keep saying the other Ryan, that actually gets kind of jarring. Especially since calling them both Ryan in some fashion is going to confuse your audience more. Just refer to them as SS407 in Chief or Supersonic in Chief Shadow or something like that. Moments later. Hello again, I'm Chief Shadow the Hedgehog, and you're not. <laughs> nonsensical opening catchphrase is nonsensical. Besides, I've seen some of your other videos and you never said that. So what? Is this your catchphrase you're going to use for commentaries? And the way you chuckled, I guess you're really proud of coming with that phrase. And also, the way you said the catchphrase is also kind of insulting to your viewers as a whole. I see out the hedgehog, and you're not. Plus, the chuckle is kind of a sign of mockery. Okay, no. Cheap Shadow wasn't mocking his fans. He was just making a simple joke. Even if you didn't find it funny, he wasn't necessarily insulting anyone. At least when compared to the insults he shows towards the game dude in this commentary. But if you think that was an insult, then you haven't seen anything yet. More moments later. In his earlier episodes, he was called the Annoyed Gaming Geek, and this is something I remembered from quite some time now. But he officially changed his name to Game Dude, and I don't think he's worthy of the name Game Dude. Okay, if you don't think that Alex doesn't deserve to be called the Game Dude, then fine. But are you going to elaborate why you don't think he deserves to be called Game Dude? It becomes pretty obvious as Chief Shadow points out the amount of flaws in Game Dude's video. If jumping to conclusions was an Olympic sport, you'd be a gold medalist. Ten seconds later. Well, I'm gonna take a look into a Sonic 06 review. That's right, I'm doing a commentary. Okay, I'm just going to bring it up right now. Prior to this commentary, Ryan has not played Sonic 06. Why are I bringing it up? Because Ryan, if you want to show how bad Game Dude is, then don't do a commentary on him reviewing a bad game. Why? Because, well, you found out later. I know that most of Game Dude's review are on games you've never played and don't really care about, but you can still do a commentary on him reviewing and bashing a good game, or at the very least, a fairly passable game, or how about you do a rant on Game you rather than a commentary on one of his reviews. The fact that Chief Shadow hasn't played Sonic 06 doesn't mean much when he can still do several hours of research on the game. And just because Game Dude's reviewing a bad game doesn't mean Chief can't call him out on it. Someone can still review a bad product poorly. I'm not going to act like his commentary was exactly the best done on him, but if he finds flaws, he has every right to point them out. Heck, let's use your strange logic against you. What are you doing defending Game Dude? You should commentate on a commentary on a good review. Now do you see how flawed your point is? I'm going to guess that you're saying that because of Shadow Son 11, when he admitted to doing his Shadow of the Hedgehog rant commentary to defend the game. I tried to find a Shadow of the Hedgehog review so I can rant on it and like, tell how it's being unfairly treated. But that doesn't mean this is always the case. Do you want to know what Shadow of Son 11 said in his commentary on Game Dude Sonic Reddit review? Because as my other commentaries are mainly defending video games, which I like, this time I do a commentary on a review for a game which I personally think is a piece of crap. So even going by what he said, your point isn't good. Sonic the Hedgehog is brilliant and Okay, Game Dude. Did your mom ever teach you not to cut someone off mid-sentence? You can completely miss the point of the sentence that way. Wait until you get the full context of what someone is trying to say before you try to disprove them. Lest the remaining context disprove you. Why are you showing an image of the box art of the Sonic the Hedgehog port on Master System? 
I got nothing against it, in fact, I haven't even played it, nor do I have anything against the Master System, and I know that there will be a lot of people who own a Master System, but chances are, more people would own a Sega Genesis. I know you're trying to say that 2 out of the 3 Sonic games that are titled Sonic the Hedgehog are good games, but still. Other than the heads up, the Master System game is also ported onto the Sega Game Gear. I know that's technically a portable version of the Master System, and the only difference between the port is the screen crunch, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. We don't. You don't even bring up very justified reasons as to why it's wrong for him to bring up the Master System. Just because more people owned a Genesis than a Master System doesn't mean Sonic on Master System is irrelevant to the discussion, especially since Master System Sonic is a completely different game from Genesis Sonic, but both, as well as 06, officially share the same name. So is Sonic the Hedgehog, but Sonic the Hedgehog is the absolute worst Sonic game ever made. Wow, you could not be more wrong there, game dude. Okay, I know what you're all thinking. I am bashing on his opinion. It's not that at all. I respect other people's opinions, but here's my problem with this. He's trying to state his opinion as if it was a fact, and that's something I can't accept. He's trying to state that Sonic 06 is the worst Sonic game of all time, which is simply not true. I know that I haven't said anything for those past few points, but I left him in because, well, remember my point that Ryan shouldn't commentate on GameCube Sonic 06 review? Well, here, my point for proves. Now Ryan, I don't like people who state their opinions as facts either, but here, GameCube's opinion is right, because prior to 2014, Sonic 06 was considered to be the worst Sonic game ever made. I haven't played it either. WHAT?! Didn't you just criticize Chief Shadow for not having played Sonic 06 prior to making his commentary? Yet you yourself admit you haven't played it either, justifying it as having seen enough reviews to know it sucks. Why did you think this hypocrisy was okay? And besides, a bit later in the commentary, you're going to say that walkthroughs can only get you so far. And yet we could use that argument against you! But I've seen people criticizing it, so I don't need to play to know that it's bad. The point is, opinions can go both ways. Yes, it's Ginyu's opinion, but it's also a fact. Whoa, 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 whoa! What did he just say? Yes, it's Ginyu's opinion, but it's also a fact. Are you serious? I thought it was bad when you bashed on me for putting Ultra Sun and Moon at the top of my 2017 games list when you commentated on my worst bosses list. But now you came right out and said that the opinion of the general consensus is a fact. Yes, it's a very popular opinion, but saying it's a fact that the game is bad? That just makes you look much more condescending than Chief Shadow in his point about how he was mocking his viewers. That was, without any exaggeration, the absolute worst point I have ever heard from you. It almost made you come off as a bully. It doesn't matter how terrible Sonic 06 is. There's no such thing as a factually bad game. Besides, I do consider Sonic 06 a bit of a guilty pleasure myself, since I just love the Sonic Adventure gameplay formula so much. 06 forever tainted the public reputation of the series, but it can still be enjoyed for one reason or another over other games in the series. At the end of the day, one can still find subjective value in something that has a lot of objective problems. That's what guilty pleasures tend to be. 8.01 p.m. If you look the game Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance, there's your worst Sonic game ever made. Not only that, but the game Sonic Labyrinth also sucked. I've heard reviews of both Sonic Genesis and Sonic Labyrinth, and there was not one thing positive I could find from those reviews. Okay, I have no problem if you think that both Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the DBA and Sonic Labyrinth are bad games, but let me guess. You agree with your good friend Tom that Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis is the worst Sonic game ever made. Am I right? Because that's the only evidence I can find of you saying that Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis is the worst Sonic game in your opinion, since judging from your other videos, you own neither a Game Boy Advance nor a Sega Game Gear. Also, I'm surprised that you agree with Tom and say that Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis is the worst Sonic game of all time, and not say that Sonic Heroes is the worst Sonic game of all time. But oh, then again, you do know what opinion means. Unlike you. I know Ryan considers Sonic Heroes as his most hated video game. Evidence? What's that? You can't just guess that Chief Shadow is only saying this because of Shad Simpson 11. The best reason I could come up with is what he said in his top 5 games I used to like but now hate. So overall, not only is Sonic Heroes the worst game I've ever played, but it's also the number one game that did not age well for me. 
Dude, it was a fucking nightmare. First of all, I suck at hockey. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, all right, I, I got this, guys. Back, I got it, I got it. I have no problem with you using Sonic for Hire as your skip card, but this particular segment goes on for a tad too long. Skip cards shouldn't be much more than a few seconds long. Now, I know it's literally been one second since our last counterpoint, but that was also not very good video editing. Not only do we see Roshitsu and Super Sonic 407's avatars, Shadowstar and my avatar that you had to crop out at times, you didn't even properly cut out my point. We so heard the very last part of the point I made in that commentary. Okay, so to give context to that point, when I mentioned that Roshitsu and Super Sonic 407 did a commentary on Chief Shadow, Shadowstar 1224 did a commentary on their commentary, and that's one of Rowan's sources of footage. Wave also did one of those too, and I commentated Wave's commentary a long time ago. Back on topic, normally we wouldn't be harping on this, as there are cases where a brief snippet like that is too brief to cut out, but there were a couple of seconds where you could reasonably cut it out before Game Dude speaks up again. As we targeted at three different Sonic games, all with the exact same name is, must this pile of hedgehog shit be one of them? Okay, this is a completely new game. This has a different storyline, it is not a remake. Ryan is correct, Game Dude. If it was a remake, then it would mostly be the same game, just with enhanced graphics and or a tweak or two added in. Did you really just stop the video to agree with Chief Shadow? I can't believe it. You did not just stop the video to agree with Chief Shadow. I mean, I see that you bring up some more points towards Game Dude in this point, but you could have just cut it right before Chief Shadow interjected. We're not asking you to bring up the same thing Chief brought up, but we just want you to be more consistent with this. Seriously, Rowan. Next, I suppose you'll be bringing up the old I'm not repeating myself card, are you? Um, about that. Yay, I can't wait. Soon after. Yeah, I can't think of really anything else to say. You don't have to say you can't really think of much else to say. Even though your last point was basically you agreeing with Chief Shadow's point, ergo you had very little to add. Well, on to the next part. Wait, next part? Does Rowan not realize that he can upload videos longer than 15 minutes these days? It's been like that for a long time now. I guess you probably don't want your video to be too long, or are experiencing problems. Would it hurt to at least explain that in the video, or at least in the description? Three days later. Like, what if a shitty Mario game, I mean, another shitty Mario game is made, and named Super Mario Brothers? It's a shameful disgrace! Uh, yeah, Game Dude, what's the point of that small scene where you put in Sonic 06? It's something a lot of internet reviewers like to do to show them getting started. AVGN does this all the time, and since Game Dude's an AVGN ripoff, of course he'd copy that. Okay, Shadow Sun 11 has stated this in his Shadow of the Hedgehog defense rant, and now I'm going to say it. One game will not kill an entire franchise. I agree with you on the whole, one game will not kill the franchise thing, but... Tom wasn't the one who stated, someone by the name of Helsing920 did. Tom was just sparring that point in the defense rant slash commentary. Again, citation needed. Even if that were the case, Helsing doesn't exactly have sole ownership of the phrase, and it's apropos of the situation since 06, while awful, didn't kill the Sonic franchise in the long run. Even so, the quote has no relevance to Game Dude's point about how the bad game sharing the name of the well-liked first games in the series. Though he's arguing about the legacy of the name. I find that it's more about audience confusion when two games share the same name. For instance, let's talk about Doom. Wait, you mean the original game from 1993 or the new one from 2016? They do. But too bad they never ride the shit train like everyone else. Now how does all the Sonic characters suck? Get into detail, why do the characters suck? The way you impatiently ask Ginyu why he thinks Sonic and Tails now suck makes me think that this is your first time watching the video. I know this is kind of an old counterpoint, but how about you just watch the video before deciding to do a commentary on it? Now, I know you're thinking that Ryan only wants answers from Game Gear on why Song and Tails sucks because spoilers, the only thing that Game Gear brings up are their new looks. Well, I still feel like bringing this up as it shows how impatient some people are. No offense to you, Ryan. And you're still recording with a lot of background noise. I thought I told you in my last commentary that you should wait until there's not as much background noise, then record. It gets very distracting. Tails used to be so cool. As cute and adorable that he was, he was bad ass. Game Dude, what's the point of that zoom in? To further prove how bad ASS Tails is? Yes. He zooms into the billboard to highlight how, in Sonic Adventure 2, Tails' badass cred went up since he's considered an outlaw at the time. 
moments later. And that was his charm, but he's not a super powerful fox anymore. Again, how is Tails super powerful? Get into depth. Now repeating myself. I just had to open my mouth. Rowan, did you not learn from the last time I commentated on you? People don't need to say they won't repeat themselves. It just ends up making the video longer than it needs to be. And your commentary is already long as it is. This is something the commentary community stopped doing years ago. That's one of the things we have skip cards for. If you have a point you'd be repeating yourself on, just skip the segment. Because your other time making that point would also be referring to that time. What makes this even worse is that you even address it in your Rosh Hashanah Tells Everyone to Stop videos. Garbage being rained on me is already too much. You really need to make an already bad situation even worse. Flip over to what I said about the GV having a limitation because I refuse to repeat myself. For the last fucking time, stop saying how you won't repeat yourself. Basically, you poke fun at your own mistake, use a clip from my commentary on you, implying that you addressed that it was a problem on your end, but then just did it anyway. A little later. Because like Sonic? Whoa! Ah! 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 Uh, sorry about that, but man, Game you what an epic fail you just shown there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start a tally on every time Game you dies in a failing way. How is the death shown particularly ridiculous? For all you know, it could be an intentional fail to overemphasize how bad the game is, or even prove its point that neither Tails or Sonic can swim. And for the record, Rowan just counts whenever Game Dude dies rather than focus on what deaths were particularly fail-worthy, flanderizing the gag in the same commentary. Twelve seconds later. He can only attack by throwing dummy ring bombs. It's so stupid. Okay, now Shaxel Sun Eleven described this in his Shadow of the Hedgehog defense rant, but I'm gonna say it. How come that nobody complained about the use of the dummy ring bombs in Sonic Heroes, used by both Tails and Rouge, when they complain about it here in this game? It doesn't make any sense. Don't go blaming this game just because it uses the same thing. First off, I've seen both parts of Tom's defense rant and I never heard him say that no one complained about the use of the dummy ring bombs in Sonic Heroes and yet complained about their using those six. Maybe you're getting your videos mixed up. And secondly, I haven't played Sonic Heroes either, but from what I can get from Raushitsu, no one complained about the use of the dummy ring bombs in Heroes because they were rarely used. In 06, they're basically Tails' only means of attack. I hate to repeat a point from my last commentary, but Game Dude still complained about it in his Sonic Heroes review. Throwing dummy rings is stupid and awkward. Why are they infinitely stored up as bombs? Why can you go through them? Why can't you move them? And why can't you just recollect them, but not raise your ring count? Later. Look, bullets are flying up my ass. If I imagine bullets flying up your ass, I would see rapid fire. But the fact that I don't see any bullets being fired just proves you wrong. Uh. Can we hear what Ginyu said before he said that bullets are flying up his rear end? Jumping into the vehicle because sometimes the buttons won't respond. I'm just gonna throw this out there, Rowan. That gap in the audio was really bad. I understand you were using footage from Shadow Star's commentary, as you said in the opening to this, but you could have spliced in part two of my commentary. I mean, you did that in some of the other points in the commentary, as shown by the subtitle at an earlier point in the commentary. So why couldn't you have done that here too? Do you see that footage? Do you see bullets hitting Shadow, triggering the invisibility frame? Yeah, I think that's what Game Dude meant. Well, you don't have to say let's hear what Game Dude said again, because it's what he shows that proves Chief Shadow wrong, not what he says. Two very boring minutes later. Once they climb into a wall, they're like permanently stuck. Interesting. I didn't know the PS3 had winter games on it. And yes, I stole another line from Tom, PLEASE DON'T SEE YOU! Crap, another joke stolen from Tom. TRY HOLDING THE BUTTON! You haven't even played the game, so how would you know that holding the button would help get you get unstuck? Yes, I know, there's walkthroughs to get information on a game, but in this situation, looking up a walkthrough can only get you so far. Instead, look up a game's instructions online. I can assure you that holding the button doesn't work any better than mashing it. I assume the idea is that he's sticking to the wall repeatedly because of the mashing, even though that's not how the wall climbing works. 
Now, remember when Sonic didn't suck? And how every single square inch was enriched with majestic dreamlike atmospheres beyond imagination? That was a long time ago. Ah, <sighs> why does everybody get so hard about this game and saying that this is the death of Sonic? Because this game was supposed to be Sonic's 15th birthday game, and instead, Sega blew it. And hey, that's not to say that everyone says that Sonic 06 is the death of Sonic. Some people actually like Sonic 06 and don't think it killed the series. Like Man said in his commentary on the Maui, whether one game will kill the franchise or not is a matter of opinion. Some people might think Sonic 06 is the death of the Sonic series, some may not. Three things to say. A. Just because Chief Shadow said everyone doesn't mean he literally means everyone. B. Didn't you say earlier that it was a fact that Sonic 06 is a bad game, and now you're saying people can disagree with that notion? My upload schedule is more consistent right now! And C. Yes, I said whether one game will kill a franchise or not is a matter of opinion in my commentary I did on Waves, but that was also a very bad point I made. You need to see how other games of the franchise play out before assuming a franchise is ruined because of it. Just look at Devil May Cry. Sure, it seemed like the Ninja Theory reboot killed the series in its tracks, but the recent release of Devil May Cry 5 proves that it did not. It is true that it is a matter of opinion in some respects, but you need to have actual facts to back up your opinion. Two very boring minutes later. But this, this is a hideous pile of fucking shit, and having to return to it is the biggest waste of time. <laughs> This is probably the biggest failing in review game view because I'm pretty sure it's rare to die on a hub world. Oh, then you're going to love the Banjo-Kazooie games. Okay, you need to explain a little bit more on why Soliana sucks. Okay, all I'm getting is you just hating on it. You need them go more in depth. Elaborate, motherfucker. Okay, I understand about elaborating on why Soliana sucks, but saying something sucks and hating on something well, I know that half the time, saying something sucks is a fact. And there you go again, going back and forth. You say it's a fact, then you say it's an opinion, then you go back to making that outright false claim that's a fact. Is this commentary almost over yet? Unfortunately, no. But at least we're getting close to the halfway point. I mean, we are done with the second part and there's still three left. I think I need to lie down for a bit. It was your idea to make this whole commentary be in one part, wasn't it? You're right. Fine, let's move on. One week later. I do you this favor, and now you owe me a lot of money. Money that you're gonna have to work off. Shit balls. We have nothing to say about most of the skip card except for this last sentence. Deformed penguins? We have no idea what penguins you've been looking at then. Danny DeVito and Batman Returns, maybe? Now, the humans are monstrosities, don't belong in the Sonic universe, and need to be massacred immediately. God, why is it that people don't complain about the humans in Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, and Shadow the Hedgehog, and yet they complain about the humans appearing in Sonic 06? This makes no sense whatsoever. I know I'm using a point from Danny and the other Ryan, but in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and Shadow the Hedgehog, interacting with them are optional. While in Sonic 06, interacting with them is mandatory in order to progress through the game. And I know I'm using a point from myself that I made in my last commentary, but in Sonic Adventure 1, they were recommended to talk to if you want to know where to go. In Adventure 2, we saw them in some cutscenes. And in Shadow the Hedgehog, which I should have brought up then, there were some human bosses. Plus, while the irrelevance of the human characters in those games were likely part of it, I think it's also because the graphics weren't good enough to indicate that realistic human designs were what they were going for, leaving a bit of stylization to them compared to 06. It didn't stick out as badly. They're absolutely retarded. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have the budget to try to hire other voice actors to do the townspeople. Or, you know, the game is rushed, because even if Sega and Sonic Team didn't have the budget, the least they could do is use your voice team that they do have to record live for the townspeople. It may sound lazy, but still, that's a convenient way. Heck, the townspeople have voices, so why couldn't the voices behind those people record the lines? Oh wait, that's right, the game was rushed. In order to both of you, Noises don't really determine how retarded someone is. I mean, yes, it's an immediate problem, but other main factors to make someone retarded is their movements and what they say. Though to be fair, in the first voice game you show, the boy was moving in a retarded way. Nice going, Rowan. You literally just destroyed your own point about how noises don't determine how stupid someone is. And even if you didn't, 
Game Dude was saying that to be dramatic. Besides, the second person was moving like a zombie, so Game Dude's technically right about that one. Later. Everyone knows you can't have a Sonic game without an accordion player. Okay, you said in an earlier point that the humans need to be massacred immediately, and yet you're just going out and say that every Sonic game needs an accordion player? Why are you taking everything he's saying so literally? It's clear he's just trying to make a joke. Whether you think it's funny or not is a matter of opinion, but it's so obvious that it was not supposed to be taken seriously. I know I'm using your clip, Danny, but your kind point against Ryan's statement here is so epic, I had to play it. Can't you find some other way to respond to the point other than just literally letting the other commentary play out? It can even be as simple as, he's obviously being sarcastic about that. Now, the worst of them all is Elise. This half-white, half-orange slut shares a romantic relationship with Sonic. How is she a freaking slut? Go in depth on why Elise is a freaking slut. I do not see a slut in Elise. Your oh, opinion. Is. But Chief Shadow's point is that Game Dude should elaborate as to how Elise is one. Also, Elise would need to be quite promiscuous to actually be considered one. Something that clearly wouldn't be in an E10 Plus game. In this case, slut is used as a baseless derogatory insult. This isn't an opinion thing. One minute, 37 seconds later. That needs to go back to Final Fantasy where she came from. If you're wondering what Game Dude's talking about, he's saying that Elise is a Final Fantasy reject. Just to let you guys know, since Ryan cut the first few seconds of the clip I showed you out. This is another part of the video where you shouldn't cut off Game Dude's sentence. Otherwise, people like me don't know what Game Dude's talking about when he brought Final Fantasy. Yeah, most people would know what Game Dude means by needs to go back to Final Fantasy. He even said where she came from, and Elise was the only girl in the footage he was showing at the time. So, what else would people think he meant? Some random butterfly? The joke doesn't need that much context. She was designed more like a Final Fantasy character than a Sonic character. End of story. In this one, all you have to do is keep talking to the first person you see, and that's it. Nothing else! Okay, that's maybe a point there. I mean... Wait, I means? Don't you mean, I mean? Because poor literacy is cool. Really? You're getting annoyed by a minor slip of the tongue? I mean, we're also nitpicking in some cases, but point still remains. Later. The graphics are realistically ugly when they should be stunningly cartoonish. Okay, this game was released for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Of course the graphics are going to be realistic, and I don't find the graphics too bad. Once you again, want your opinion! Graphics, play on the Wii. Okay, I know I'm using another point from Danny, but just because the Wii has a lot of cartoony looking games and it's a family friendly console, doesn't mean it's only restricted to only cartoony graphics. Take The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, for example. Except he never really stated that the Wii can only have cartoony graphics. He only said to play on the Wii if he wants them, since the Wii, being less powerful, had more stylized cartoony games than realistic ones. One minute, 37 seconds later. Know what? This doesn't count for the tally. How so? I don't see how it wouldn't count for the tally. I guess you're trying to say it's the camera's fault, but you could have explained that. Besides, you just end up counting random deaths for the tally anyway, no matter how much of a fail they appear to be. At least the music matches the sceneries. Huh, thank you. At least that's one decent thing about the game. The music's incredible. He only said that the music matches the sceneries. He never said that they were good in any form. Matching the scenery isn't a way of expressing the music's good qualities? Sure, music can match the scenery and still be bad, but the matching is still a compliment. A backhanded compliment, but still a compliment. Moments later. The collision detection sucks. Hey, play Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. That game has worse collision detection. Question. What review of Sonic Genesis did you see where the person reviewing it said that the game had worse collision detection than Sonic 06? It's honestly hard to make out what Chief Shadow said. But it sounds a lot like he's saying he's played Sonic Genesis. So if he's played the game, he'd know how bad the collision detection is there. And he never said he knew of it from a review. He also could have said, go play Sonic Genesis. And as for proof, Brain Scratch commentary is his final part of the Sonic Genesis playthrough, where Johnny dies by a clipping issue during the final boss that didn't exist in the original version. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll just watch the LP to see what he needs. Meanwhile, back in the lowlands, instead of the robots resembling animals like they should, they resemble unwanted crap deleted from Metroid Prime. Why are you comparing Sonic 06 to Metroid Prime? He's only comparing the enemies in the game to enemies in Metroid Prime. He's not comparing the game itself to Metroid Prime. Basically, he said that the enemies in Sonic 06 resembles Metroid Prime rejects. They're still a part of the game, so Game Dude is still comparing the game to Metroid Prime by saying they have similar enemy designs. I'll admit that I think Chief Shadow is making a big deal out of nothing, but he's still right in saying that Game Dude's comparing them. Later. Some of the rings are impossible to get. They wouldn't be so difficult if the camera didn't change angles. Not even a few seconds ago, you said that the rings are impossible to get, and now you're saying that they're difficult to get? Impossible and difficult aren't the same thing, unless you're using another hyperbole. Oh my god, who the hell cares? And what if he is making a hyperbole? Then what's the problem? What's wrong with making a hyperbole? It's meant to make the video more dramatic for the sake of entertainment. Granted, Game Dude's video was really bad. Well, I'm kind of neutral on it. Anyways, Rowan, if you don't have a problem with Game Dude's hyperbole, then your points are very easy to misinterpret. You know how in the description of your your generic person who misinterprets things gets owned, where you said this because I was misinterpreting things you said? Well, maybe I wouldn't have if your points weren't so hard to interpret correctly. So, shall we move on to part four? Please do so. Three weeks later. Or if the controls weren't so bad. Yes! No! Fuck Nozzle! Doesn't count for tally either. I'd be able to know what you said if you lowered the volume of the clip you're talking over. I can make out what he said. You were saying that doesn't count for the tally either, but still. Okay, first of all, I am forced to play this. To quote Matt in his first Quick Crack Reviews commentary, well, okay. I appreciate the shout out to me, but as I said last time I commentated on you, unless you count my triple shot, you don't have to quote someone when you're making the simplest of points. There's really no reason to do it unless it's a point you don't hear very often. Later. Now look at this! Sonic outruns this orca, jumps on flying pieces of wood. Okay, you can't deny that looks awesome. Game Dude wasn't saying it doesn't look awesome. He's building up to his next point. Besides, you know how you keep saying it's Chief Shadow's opinion in your commentary? Well, it's Game Dude's opinion whether or not jumping on flying pieces of wood looks awesome. Jumps on the orca's fin. I think you meant cling onto the orca's fin. You can't jump onto an orca's fin. Looks like Sonic jumped from the broken wood onto the orca's fin to me. And now logically, you'd assume that Jackie Chan's gonna jump to that nearby island. Why are you comparing Sonic? To Jackie Chan you not being Ryan. He means to mock Sonic for the crazy shit he just pulled by comparing him to Jackie Chan. Kinda like when people remark, no shit Sherlock, or something like that. But as the Joker once said, if you have to explain the joke, there is no joke! Eventually... It can't! It just can't! If you put your mind into something long enough, yes it can. Okay, I'll put my mind to swimming to the sun, telekinetically lifting Jupiter, and making Half-Life 3 happen. By your logic, that should all be possible! But no, instead, he cleans up to the fin like a frightened cat. Wait, fighting cat? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Sorry for playing that clip, it's just... Game Dude, you can't just throw in random words you created without enough meaning to them, unless they're related to swears. Roll doll you are not, Game Dude. Roll doll you are not. It took me a long time to hear what Game Dude was saying too, but he said, frightened cat. As in, Sonic is clinging onto the orca for dear life, especially considering the fact that he can't swim. And now Tails has to save him. It's the lamest excuse to force you to play as Tails, who should have been following my ass to begin with. Hey, the characters appeared out of nowhere in Shadow the Hedgehog and nobody's complaining about that. I can't believe that I'm using another line from the other Ryan, but the reason no one complained about the characters appearing out of nowhere in Shadow the Hedgehog is because they weren't playable. First, by technicality, since you can control them with the second controller plugged in, yes they were. Second, Game Dude was complaining about Tails not following him like in Sonic 2, something the other characters in Shadow the Hedgehog did all the time. Okay, why is there even a gate here? Am I in a fucking aquarium? And why was it left open to begin with? Now look at that! It doesn't even fully close! Why doesn't the stupid orca just swim underneath? A point for Oliver and Tom, it can't. Sure, it looks like the orca can swim under the gate, but its fin is blocking the gap between the gate and the ocean floor. 
Perhaps, but that doesn't explain why the Orca couldn't free Willy its ass over the rest of the barrier. Nothing makes any logical sense. Okay, you don't need logic in video games. So where is the logic in that? I need logic in my video game. Okay, I have no problem with you using that Shoutblade X8 clip as a joke. Yes, I know his name, but the way you use a clip of him saying, I need logic in my video game. I'm sorry, even if it was a joke, it kind of felt to me you contradicted yourself on the whole, you don't need logic in video games thing. How? No, seriously, how would that contradict his point? In the clip he played, Shadow Blaze was being sarcastic. Duh! If anything, your point is the one being contradicted, since you criticized Chief Shadow for taking things too literally. Uh. Why were the other orcas trying to escape? Are you only assuming that there are more orcas because of the reused orca model? Well then again, I can't be wrong, and there are a few more orcas in that perimeter. Then look it up! Watch a playthrough of the level! This clearly shows that you don't know what you're talking about. A few moments later... And why didn't Sonic try to set them free instead of keeping them in prison? What the fuck are you talking about? Are you asking why didn't Sonic try and set the Orca free instead of keeping it in prison? Yes. Everything you just said pretty much explains everything. I mean, what asshole? What a-hole? Don't you mean, what an a-hole? I'll admit, that confused me for a while too, but he did. Let's play that sound clip again. I mean, what asshole? Granted, he was talking a bit too fast, but he did say what you said he was supposed to say. What an asshole. Because- Nope, not playing that joke two times in this commentary. First time is enough. But anyways, Game you, I think you meant to say an a-hole, not what a-hole. But then again, this is game you were talking about. He also have a bad habit of having poor grammar. Grammar? The grammar Nazi can't even pronounce grammar. Ugh. At least it's almost over. One minute, 37 seconds later. Why doesn't Sonic jump away like he did before a partially closed gate? Because A, if Sonic tried to jump above the gate, he would smack into it. And B, if Sonic tried to jump under the gate, he would bump his head. Plus, the orca is flailing about with no border, so even if the gate isn't there, jumping out of the orca's perimeter would be hard for Sonic. He can just hang onto the orca until it passes the gate, and then he can jump off without concern. I assume failing to keep the orca in that area is what makes that a fail state. For what reason only the developers know? One little boost to the surface later. One up? What's wrong with this? Uh... Are you seriously complaining about the icon that represents the one up? Who freaking cares? It means that you gain an extra life. It doesn't matter if it says one up or has Sonic's head. Well, he is Game Dude, aka Captain Nitpick. Look, Look who's, who's talking! talking! Please. Also, even if that one up there was just a nitpick, there are some people who doesn't like it when something in the game deviates from the classics, major or not. This one is just plain fucking stupid. And I die two seconds later? Isn't that a death that happens to a lot of players? It's only avoided by holding forward during the mid-air part. But since the game is making you move forward automatically before then, you wouldn't know that the first time or two. You're doing it wrong! Why are they replaced by empty containers? I think you meant to say, well, wait a minute, wrong avatar. There we go. <sighs> this is bad comedy. Can you do the rest of the commentary for me, Galvatron? Alright, it's just a clip. Later. Okay, so I beat the level, but why does Sonic stop and pose in the middle of the chase? That's the result! That is to show how well you did! That doesn't debunk Game Dude's argument about why Sonic is posing instead of, oh, I don't know, chasing after Eggman aircraft! I'm pretty sure it's still flying in the air! Well, that's from a practical point of view. Sonic only stops in gameplay, but story-wise, he is still chasing the egg carrier. Not that it matters since it gets away in the very next scene anyway. Don't you love it when a level is pointless? A little later. It's like riding a unicycle wearing a sumo suit moving a horse on a baby stroller through a bunch of winding hills. Wait, winding hills? English motherfucker! Must. Not. Play. Pulp Fiction. Clip. Twice in this commentary. Especially twice in one part. He said winding hills. Get your ears clean next time. Actually, now that you mention it, it does sound like he's saying blinding hills.
12 seconds later. And that's actually worse because, well, they didn't even try! Didn't even try what? Again, you got bad grammar, game dude. Didn't even try providing context to why you're playing as Tails during White Acropolis. It's not hard to reverse the footage to regain the context that was lost. Also, you sure offend with repeating yourself with a bad grammar point. One frozen wasteland later. Now, this is where the game really takes it up the ass. Dying is easier than the kindergarten math test. Believe me. Okay, I will admit that looks like the most challenging and probably the most frustrating part of the entire game. Yes, but all you need to do is yet. just keep- Thank you for restating what we already know! Are we at Rowan's final part yet? Don't worry, we are now. Thankfully, it's only a few minutes long. Thank goodness. Three days later. And ironically, even the rings, because when you magically glide through them, the straightforward momentum hurls you into even more objects. Okay, are you sure you're running normally, or are you using a gizmo you brought from the store? Like I said before, I haven't played a game. In other words, I can't tell. I can assure you it is that difficult to keep yourself steady in these mock speed sections. Also, if you stay too close to the edges you die... <laughs> Yes, I count those as separate deaths. Got a problem with that? Yes, we do, because all this counter gag, and all counter gags for that matter, achieves is telling us that Game Dude died a lot. I personally don't really mind counter gags all that much, but still. I can get the same effect from listening to another one bites the dust. It sounds like a metaphor for my brain cells right now. If you jump too early, you die. If you jump too late, you die. And because you can only jump straight, if you jump at the wrong angle, you die. Okay, now it's just dragging things out. Overuse Monty Python, get out with it, clip! Well, I do like your uses of the Castlevania death theme. Playing it over and over again, a few seconds apart from each other, it starts to get annoying. Besides, it prolongs this video even more, as if your commentary wasn't already long enough. So, maybe you could just speed up the sound clips. Or maybe shorten the death clips and play the sounds closer to each other, kind of like the AVGN episode in Castlevania 3. This fucker's got no mercy! Although then we'd be complaining about you plagiarizing the nerd, so it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Two very boring minutes later. And now, time for my final thoughts, starting with Game Dude. Well, nothing much need to be said about your video, but I don't hate you like many people on the internet do, so I really suggest you to be more careful with your grammar mistakes, but then again, why do I have a feeling that you won't take my advice? Maybe it's because he's long gone now? I mean, it's still unclear if it's okay to commentate on really old videos or not, but don't act like he's still here! Later. Don't go for a review about a game that's universally hated, otherwise people would think that you're defending it. I know you're not doing commentaries anymore, and I do respect your decision. Then why are you giving him commentary advice when he's not doing it anymore? This commentary was effectively dead air! And that concludes my first real second degree commentary, and my first commentary without Manifying 7 Second involved. As usual, feel free to comment or do a commentary, if you're fast enough. Trust me, this one took a lot of patience to script. And also, what do you mean, if you're fast enough? Do you mean before your commentary becomes outdated? If so, then that's rich coming from the guy who's commentating on a NINE-YEAR-OLD VIDEO! You're too slow doesn't even begin to cover what was wrong with your statement. Now, like I said, it's still unclear if it's okay or not, but that statement you made was hypocritical. And that's it for pretty much the rest of the video. This was awful. This may very well be the worst commentary I've commentated on in quite a while. Oh boy, where do we begin? Well, you were still very inaudible to the point where you're almost impossible to hear without headphones or blasting the volume to maximum, unnecessarily repetitive, nitpicking up the wazoo, misunderstanding what was being said, explicitly derivative of another commentary, and the fact you acted like a video that's as old as a T-Rex fossil is relevant, let alone by a guy who doesn't do this shit anymore and therefore won't care about it! And you showed a lot of signs that you were stuck in 2010 with some of the older commentary tropes you did. I do, honestly, with no sarcasm, feel genuinely sorry for you that you weren't around during the time this was forgivable, especially since I think the commentary community was more interesting back then, because the topics were more entertaining and nostalgic, but you've still done some things that we no longer have a reason to do anymore, other than to make commentaries longer, like when you stopped to agree with Chief Shadow, and with the not repeating myself argument. And that point of how the opinion of the general consensus is a fact, that was just terrible. 
So, Meta, do you think this is worse than the commentaries he did on you? Honestly, no. Because, Rowan, at least you didn't go off topic as much as you did then. And at least this time it didn't feel like you were trying to point out every single thing that sounded even remotely wrong. Well, not as much. But I'm still not getting my hopes up just yet. Especially since he ignored some criticisms towards him in the past. And I also hope that maybe, just maybe, Rowan actually listens this time. We're not saying all advice is good, like when people say stuff like, Please stab yourself, or stop doing commentaries altogether. That's advice you should ignore, but you still need to listen to your fans. Otherwise, people will probably treat you the same way they treated Joshua 8428. And you don't want that to happen to you, do you? Well, thanks for sticking with us throughout the commentary. Please do not go to Rowan's channel and attack him. Neither Meta nor I endorse attacking a person purely based on their work. Oh boy, have I got a lot to say about this one. So anyways, guys, remember Rowan Academia 185? The guy who was notorious among the commentary community for making bad commentaries? Well, it turns out that he's made other kinds of videos too. One of those kinds of videos being YouTube poops. Now at first, I thought they were enjoyable enough. Not something I'd compare to the works of YouTube poopers with crazy editing skills like Hour of Poop and Huffy 1138, but I still enjoyed them, at least until the biggest problem with them started to become much, much more obvious as time went on. And by the time this one shot is over, you guys will notice it too. Alright, let's get into it. I'm going to play some parts of his most recent YouTube poop, and then I'll get into my point. Not Cody! Look over there! Now shut your mouth! Dad, am I adopted? Apparently. All you're doing is helping him prove his point. Do you think it's okay? Do you guys see the problem here? No, it's not the fact that he plays clips from random videos that's the issue. At least it's not just that. I'm going to give you a short montage of clips from his other YouTube poops, and then you guys should see the problem. We have to find a way to distract him so we can get out of the Raccoon City. Okay, well, I am taking the stupid briefcase back to the Raccoon City. Because I'm supposed to go to Raccoon City. I mean actual real whales in the Raccoon City. Oh, I got my nacho hat, my baby rattle from a damn kitty mill. Raccoon City. Well, I was young and stupid. I'm a changed man. I Shut your mouth. Look at it. Look at it. Shut your mouth. I'm not letting you launch a nuke. Shut your mouth. I'm really bad at pool. Bet me some money. <laughs> Shut your mouth. He thinks we're in the wall? What? what? Apparently. All you're doing is helping him prove his point. Are you sure you're the boss? Apparently. All you're doing is helping him prove his point. <laughs> Apparently. All you're doing is helping him prove his point. Was it my mom? No! He fucking cheated! No! no! Oh, so he doesn't need a new brain? No! Yeah. I think he likes it. Liar. So nobody will ever find him. Liar. We're geniuses, guys. You're liar. Whales are awesome. Yeah. Liar. Bubba Bubba's the best gum in the world. Liar. Did you guys notice it? That's right! He's just using the exact same clips over and over again. This will make it very easy for people to grow bored of your YouTube poops, and they'll just leave before they're even finished watching them. I think Marlboro Studios put it best. This usually comes off as a lack of effort and a lack of creativity. And don't use the same jokes and quotes in every video. It's like watching the same poop with different video footage. Variety, people! It's especially bad with how you've constantly abused that clip of me saying liars so many times that I honestly regret ever recording that line. I am not kidding. These clips are getting really annoying, and I can almost guarantee that if more people knew about your YouTube poops, they'd be saying the same thing that I'm saying. And it's not helped by some of these clips you overuse go on for longer than needed. Oh, B O O H O O. Well done, you can S P E L L. And guess what? You're a D U M B A S S. I know, I got that joke from Realm Wars. Please don't sue. I mean, the longer clips were okay the first few times, but when you keep using them this much, many people will see them less as funny and more of an excuse to drag out the video. I'll admit, it is kind of nice seeing you use clips that you haven't used before, but you rarely ever do that nowadays. Literally, the only reason I even stick around to watch your YouTube poops is because I'm interested to see what new clips you're going to use. And even then, I'm still questioning why I watched that. I don't mind you cutting the clips from random videos in your YouTube poops, and I'm even okay with you using clips from my videos. Just as long as you're not using the same one for like the 10,000th time. Seriously, even when I was skimming through your YouTube poops looking for clips to prove my point, even when I had the videos on 2x speed and had the videos on mute, I still cringed through them. I don't mean to be harsh in this video, and I'm not saying you should give up on YouTube poops altogether, but there's a certain term called variety. Learn how to use it. 
Oh, and P.S. Don't take this one shot as a shout out to you and let this encourage you to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Since I read the description of one of your previous YouTube poops, where you thought I briefly mentioned your YouTube poops and SML videos and that one time in one of my previous Q&As and thought, Oh, I guess that means I should make all of my YouTube poops and SML videos because that'll get more people to make shoutouts to me. Because, no, it didn't work then and it won't work this time.